And now, let's dive in to the Splash Live. Good morning and welcome to the Splash Live. Dave Scott from the home studio today. So, thanks for putting up with some different surroundings on the snowy Tuesday right here in West Bloom. Good morning and welcome to your 90 minutes of live television programming. We do it each and every Monday through Friday from... 9 30 until 11 o'clock we start off of course with the splash and then we go into the mega cast with tyler this morning at about uh, 10 o'clock so make sure you stay tuned the splash and then the mega cast you can watch us on comcast channel 15 over on the at&t side on cable you'll find us on channel 99 on AT&T. Of course, you can watch us live on the stream on CivicCenterTV.com, or you can enjoy us on your favorite social media platform. Facebook, just go in and search for Civic Center TV or The Splash. Go over to uh, YouTube or there as well. You can find us there each and every day. Just go in and look for Civic Center TV or West Bloomfield or The Splash. Any of those will bring you up. And uh, then thank you very much for tuning in on the snowy drive. Both hands in the wheel, 10 and two today. But thank you for tuning in as you're driving around West Bloomfield right here on the big 89, 89.3 Lakes FM. Good to have you with us. So uh, snow is a big news of the day. Not a terrible snow, but here we go. We're into the wintertime pattern, and it's not going away this week. High today, we'll make it up to 38 degrees, down to 32 tonight with some clouds and a couple of flakes for tomorrow. Um, not much. Much warmer and then Friday it's going to cool down even a little bit more our high on Friday is only going to be 30 degrees it's uh it could be a white forget Christmas could be a white Thanksgiving right here in the greater West Bloomfield area you just never know so a lot going on here now I hope you got all your yard work done here in West Bloomfield because now that that snow is coming it's going to be a little bit more difficult but there are a couple of other things you might want to do some household maintenance things uh both inside and outside just a couple of reminders from some of our friends and I was uh, scrolling around on Facebook live and I saw that picture if that is your gutter system in your house, I know what it feels like. You got, you know, you got trees, you got shrubs, and then you got almost as much growing in your gutters. Uh, really good idea to get those gutters clean before wintertime because you don't want all the snow and ice to freeze up in there and cause all kinds of problems for your roof system in your home. So uh, folks online say doing that is a really good idea. Um, in addition, the other thing you might want to consider is getting your ducks in your home clean. I've always heard about that, but I was reading online today in the West Bloomfield forum on Facebook. This guy, Mark Green, put this picture up. Now, I don't know if he's exaggerating because he's in the duck cleaning business, but I saw that pail of gunk. And, and apparently that came out of somebody ducks here in West Bloomfield. So you can get all that build up. The air can't flow through. Your winter heating bill is going to be bad enough as it is. Get all that gunk out of your ducks. If you've not cleaned up your ducks, they say you're supposed to do it every two years. Again, this is uh, advice from the contractors that do the work. Uh, but if you want to find out more about that and find out about Mark, a guy here in West Bloomfield, I don't know him, but I just saw that he posted on Facebook. He and a bunch of other people are in there. Now, speaking of Facebook, if you don't get into Facebook a whole lot, um, other than watching Civic Center TV and listening to 89.3 Lakes FM, you are missing out on just an amazing uh community and lots of information. And if you don't really know where to start, one of the places you might want to start is right here. This is the West Bloomfield Forum. And I go in there every day. You can go in and it's kind of a commercial marketplace, but it's also a place where people will tell you about, you know, how to get your ducks clean, how to get your gutters clean, new restaurants that open up in the area. But you'll also see a lot of other things in there, um, resident to resident information, local happenings, things that are going on in the community. You know, I saw some really nice posts in there about some folks that were having issues that um, maybe needed some charitable help, all kinds of things. 
in the greater West Bloomfield area that might be of use to you. So check it out and, and go in and sign up. It's called the West Bloomfield Forum. If you go into Facebook, even if you don't know anything about Facebook, it's easy. Just go into Facebook and type in West Bloomfield by the search area. Type in West Bloomfield and look for the West Bloomfield Forum. Now, Kegel Harbor and Sylvan Lake residents, you might even be in better shape because in Kegel and Sylvan, there are incredible uh, area resident forums where a lot of information is shared back and forth. It's a little bit different when you get into Kegel Harbor because the one there is called Kegel Harbor Residents and Friends, and it's a discussion area. And you can get in there and find a lot of information. We advise you to go in and sign up because that'll make it easy for you to see all the information. And I was in there today, and the guys might be able to scroll through here and show it to you. Thank you, guys. Nice work. But there's still a lot of political stuff in here, too. So get in there and get that politics out of there and put some stuff in like, like Rob Kalman did there just a couple of minutes ago. Uh, pretty pictures of the lake, things going on in your community. Get in there, put some posts in there, and then it's just a great way, Kegel Harbor, to figure out what's going on. Sylvan Lake, the, the forum in Sylvan Lake is called Sylvan Lake, What's Going On? And you're going to need to join that one. You can't watch it unless you join, but no big deal. Just go in there and sign up. There's a lot of followers. Look at that, 2,300 members, 2,300 members. How many people live in Sylvan Lake? <laughs> You got 2,300 people all sharing information back and forth. And, you know, we know a lot of people live in our area uh, during the summer, especially in a place like Silver Lake. And, and, you know, they may be snowbirds. They may go down to Florida or Arizona or something to the Carolinas, wherever the rest of the year may not be around. So it's a really good way for people to keep in touch with each other. So the West Bloomfield Forum on Facebook. Kegel Harbor Residents and Friends, and Sylvan Lake, what's going on? A great place to find out what's happening. And I'm going to get in there and all those before the week is over and put a little hello from all of us here at the Splash and Civic Center TV. But I advise you to go in there and, and mingle around with people in your community. So it's the 15th of November. I was just kind of working up everything on the show today. And then Hello, 15th of November. It's the opening of the firearm deer season here in the state of Michigan. So the firearm deer season is open, kicked off this morning with sunrise. It's going to run for about two weeks until the 30th of November. Lots of hunters heading out uh, into the woods. Traditionally, people go up north to get a deer. Um, this is the first year that hunters will have to report their harvest online at risk of fine. So if, if you are going up north or maybe your husband or boyfriend or friends are going up north, I would remind them to make sure to uh, check in with the DNR, the Department of Natural Resources, now requiring all Michigan deer hunters to report their kills within 72 hours of recovery or risk being fine. Now, it also got me thinking this morning, are you kidding me? We have a lot of deer right here in, in our area too. But uh, I did check in with West Bloomfield Police and a lot of other communities don't hunt in West Bloomfield. I know there's a lot of deer everywhere, but you're not allowed according to the DNR to hunt anywhere near a structure. And there's an ordinance against hunting in West Bloomfield along with most of our other residential communities. There are places in Southern Michigan and even in Southeastern Michigan where it might be safe to hunt. West Bloomfield is not one of them. Just imagine you shot a rifle off in it. It could really hurt somebody. So hunting season, for out in the woods, away from people, away from structures, not a good idea in, in a residential area. So says Kurt Lawson of the West Bloomfield Police Department. So enjoy firearm season, just go do it somewhere else and, and uh, enjoy the deer that are around our com community. Maybe uh, give the deer that are in your backyard some names and, and say hi to them today. So we're gonna take a break. We'll be back in a minute. We're gonna talk about the election follow. Finally, Debbie Binder has had a moment to take a sip of her coffee like I do here every morning on the show and uh, look back at how the election went up here in West Bloomfield in the greater West Bloomfield area. We'll check in with her in a minute. Suzanne Levine checks in from the greater West Bloomfield Chamber of Commerce. We've got some news for you this morning as well. Don't go away. I'm Dave Scott. This is the Splash Live and we will be right back. We'll be right back with the Splash Live. Let's savor these moments. Made possible by the COVID-19 vaccine. Oh. 
Keep the dining out going by keeping yourself protected and your COVID-19 vaccines up to date. Watch Civic Center TV with our brand new live captions. To turn on live captions, go to civiccentertv.com and click Watch Live. In your web browser, click on the Options tab in the top right and find the Accessibilities tab. Then just switch on live captions to heighten your enjoyment of our local programming. Thank you so much for watching Civic Center TV. And now, back to the Splash, live! Good morning. Thank you for joining us on the Splash Live. Dave in my uh, home studio is here today. Thank you very much for tuning in. All around West Bloomfield, don't forget, Tyler Keith will be checking in shortly, uh, just after 10 o'clock on this snowy Tuesday morning with more news and information, part of our 90 minutes of live local programming each and every Monday through Friday, beginning at 9.30 on Civic Center TV, 89.3 Lakes FM, and all across the internet. Well, she's been the busiest person in our whole community for the past couple of weeks, and maybe even a little bit longer, uh, probably having a little time, I hope, to sip on her coffee this morning, is our West Bloomfield Township Clerk, Debbie Binder. Good morning, Debbie. Welcome back to the Splash Live. Good morning, Dave. Good to see you, and you're right, we've been really busy for the last few weeks. <laughs> so, uh, Township Clerk Debbie Binder, how big was this election from a numbers standpoint here at home and in West Bloomfield and around the county? From, you know, I don't know the county. I really watch West Bloomfield. We had a turnout of about 36,400, which was a 64% turnout, which is actually close in line with what we had in 18. However, we do have 6,000 more registered voters since we had than we had in 2018. So there was a significant increase. So what? that's interesting. I didn't expect to go there, but let's talk about that. So 6,000 more people have registered to vote. Is that that we have more population here or just more people are getting involved in the political process? I think it's a combination of both. Our census numbers were up. So we had, you know, we definitely had an increase in population. But I think, you know, the last couple of years, people have become far more engaged in politics and in the youth, especially, you know, where they may have waited to register. They're coming out as soon as they're, you know, 17 and a half or 18 to register. They can register at 17 and a half, can't vote till they're 18. Okay, so people are registering, more people are moving in the community, and and this whole process, um, it's got a little bit more complicated, but I think in, in the end, easier for people to vote. I did a video, you've been too busy, I'm sure, to see it, but I shot a video in my car, driving into the township, driving right up to the drop box, and that was a really nice setup you guys had. Yeah, it, it, it's really a convenience for people. We have one on each side of the building, but we've worked hard to encourage people to use the one on the west side of the building because it's a lot larger and we don't have to worry about it filling up, but we do have them available on both sides. It is a tremendous convenience. And I think you've seen absentee voting provide an opportunity for a lot of people that they've appreciated. Uh, we did see the numbers where during COVID, we saw that we were over 70% of our votes were cast by absentee. Those numbers are coming back down. We were about 54% of our votes were cast by absentee this election. So I think that's probably where we'll stabilize is in the 50s. Uh, you know, somewhere in over 50% though of those vote, votes will be cast by absentee ballot. But that's a big change from maybe a decade ago. It used to be people would vote absentee. Well, maybe I'm wrong, but it didn't it used to be where people would vote absentee if they were in Florida or they were going on a vacation or, or sick. Now it just seems 50 percent of the people voting that way and, and a little bit more in the past. Pretty big number. It, it is a significant increase. But West Bloomfield has always been a community that's engaged with absentee voting. Um, you know, now that it, Proposal 3 of 2018 made it no reason absentee voting, so you've definitely seen an uptick since everyone had that option. But we were always a community where people chose to vote by absentee ballot. So it is up, um, but over, you know, like I said, over COVID, we had over 70% of our ballots came in as absentee ballots, and now we're down in the 50s. So it, it has been all over, and it does depend on whether it's a gubernatorial, you know, what, which election it is as to how people choose to vote. Debbie Binder is our West Bloomfield Township clerk joining us this morning in the splash. Debbie, thank you very much for being here. Now, I know there's a contingent of people that are concerned about the way the elections are going and, and just the securing of, 
of our vote and making sure it's safe and it's going according to procedure. That's got to be from your perspective, given all the work you do to make sure everything is right. Um, I'm not saying it's frustrating, but does that surprise you? And can you talk a little bit about some of the things you do to make sure that our voting integrity is sound here in West Bloomfield? It, it is rather disheartening because like all of my colleagues of all partisan you know, persuasions, we work really hard to make sure that every one of our residents and constituents has the opportunity to cast their vote. And one of the best ways people can alleviate their concerns is to work an election and see the checks and balances in place. When I brought in quite a few new election workers for this election, and after training, I said to them, are you surprised by how much goes into it? And they said, yeah, well, this is new since 2020. No, it's not. Every machine is tested before the election. Every precinct in Oakland County is audited after the election. Um, there are so many safeguards in place that if people actually see the process, you know, the life of an absentee ballot or the process of checking the machines and testing, they do feel reassured. So that really is the best way to get people to, to feel more comfortable. Work an election, find out what really goes into it, even attend a training. I offered anyone who came into the office an opportunity to follow the life of an absentee ballot and see what their ballot goes through. Um, and I, you know, I've said to many people, I'm the president of the Oakland County Clerks Association. We're a bipartisan group of clerks in Oakland County. And I trust any one of them with my ballot because I trust the process and I understand the process. The only way to understand that process is to get engaged and, and see the process in action. So I would encourage anyone with hesitation or concern to please get involved, volunteer to work an election. And you do get paid actually, it's a paid volunteer position, but it's very educational and very informative as to how much really goes on to the election. So you know the facts instead of just the narrative. Well, and I appreciate that. And I think it's brilliant advice. And you want to see it? You want to learn the process? Come work an election. And, and you're doing some good for your community. Debbie, here in the state of Michigan, we have our laws allow you to start counting those ballots before election day, which certainly speeds up the process. We look at the states in the western part of the United States. They can't start counting their ballots until the polls have closed. Am I, do I have that distinction correct? Because it's really taken them a long time to get their ballots counted out there. You know, and I, I, I really follow West Bloomfield in Michigan, so I don't follow out mm -hmm. West very, very much at all. I mean, things are changing in Michigan with Proposal 2, and we will continue to learn how those will affect you know, West Bloomfield directly. Right now, we're, we're just kind of waiting for some guidance from the Bureau of Elections in the county and before we implement any changes. But as far as out West, I, I just don't know their processes. I don't want to make up an answer. I, I get that, and I, I, I appreciate your uh, your thought. Congratulations on getting our election handled so quickly, getting our results in quickly, and just another great job. I mean, there's an awful lot to it. It's like anything else in life. You don't really know all the little details that make it work, and uh, you and your staff have done a wonderful job. Congratulations. Thank you for a safe and smooth election process in West Bloomfield this time around. Thank you. I do have to say I am very lucky. I have an unbelievable staff and we bring in quite a few temporaries to help because it's a big job to get done. But I am really lucky. My staff is incredible and they make it they, they make me look good and they make it look easy. But I'm very happy to have the support I have in place, as well as the support of the community and the support of the board that allow me to have the staff I need to get this this large you know, process done well. All right, well done. Westfieldville Township Clerk Debbie Binder joining us this morning. Thank you very much, Debbie, for being with us. We're going to take a break. We'll be back in a minute. We're going to shift over to the Chamber of Commerce, check in with our good friend Suzanne Levine. She's got some big news for us when we return right here on the Splash Live. We'll be right back with the Splash Live. What's happening around you? Hear about state events, businesses, and from the people behind them on The Megacast, an hour-long TV, radio, and streaming show keeping you informed on the day-to-day -day news. Listen in on talks with volunteer groups, documentarians, and financial advisors, Monday to Friday with your host, Tyler Keeft. Catch The Megacast, weekdays from 10 a.m. to 11 on Civic Center TV, 89.3, and streaming on MyMyTV.com. Now that the vaccine is available for children five and up, why do you recommend it? Kids are part of the community and they can spread COVID. 
We're seeing both healthy children getting sick from the virus as well as children with underlying health conditions. They can easily bring the virus home to other people that are vulnerable and make them sick as well. This vaccine can change that and keep children safe. It's essential that your children get vaccinated to protect them, to protect your families, and to protect those in the community around you. And now, back to The Splash, live! Good morning and welcome back to The Splash, live as we dodge a few snowflakes here in West Bloomfield, getting ready for the cold weekend ahead of us. Thank you for joining us, staying warm together here. Uh, this Tuesday morning in the greater West Bloomfield area, Town of Keith will be here at about 10 o'clock with another hour of news and information on the Megacast. Stick around for that right here on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. Joining us now from the Greater West Bloomfield Chamber of Commerce, Suzanne Levine. Morning, Suzanne. Welcome to the Splash Live. Good morning. I need to go get my boots and my hats and my gloves out of the basement. <laughs> oh, boy. The weather sure changed quick. You know, we were just spoiled. It normally doesn't stay this long. That, By the way, as long as you're with the chamber, we're talking about weather. That had to be good for business here in West Bloomfield. People got out, had more time to get some of the services done around their home, and uh, maybe get out and do a little shopping over the last couple of weeks. Absolutely. And, you know, there's a big push for this um, local gems for people to go into small shops, support them. And if you upload a selfie, uh, you could win $1,000 or perhaps $500. So it's a great campaign if you go to oak.gov and, you know, try to support our shops anyway. But, you know, maybe you can win some money on top of it to support your shopping habit. It's a great countywide effort to support our small and local businesses in the area. We'll talk a little bit more about that tomorrow morning right here on The Splash. You've got a couple of big things to talk about. First of all, an event right around the corner that I know you want to promote. Uh, tell people what's going on. All right. So for the past couple of years, uh, we've done this great local charity drive called the Not So White Elephant, where we pick a small local charity um, and this year it's the Hospitality House Food Pantry, which is an amazing organization. Go to their website. It's not just food they provide, but job training, vehicles. Uh, they're really a, um, a small hidden gem in our community. So tomorrow night at um, uh, the Avalon of Bloomfield Hills, we'll have this event. Um, you know, please consider coming. All you have to do is bring um, a gift worth at least $20, wrap it up, and we're going to raffle them off. And all that money goes to the to the hospitality house food pantry. There'll be uh, some wine and beer and food, and there's no charge for that. Just the only charge is to bring a gift, and hopefully you'll buy some raffle tickets so that we can give all that money to help support one of our local gems, hospitality house food pantry. Well, it's always fun to get together with our friends and have a drink or two, but even better when there is a charitable angle to it. So we encourage people to get out, um, join you tomorrow night, and uh, it should be a lot of fun. I'll try to make it out myself. I'll see if I can get there. Thank you for Absolutely. the invitation. Again, details are on your website, I presume. Yes, uh, westbloomfieldchamber.com, or people can contact me at wbloomfieldchamber at gmail.com or 248-626-3636. We welcome everyone in the community to attend because it's not just having fun and networking, but you're also, you know, as I say, supporting a very um, important charity. And we we forget there are people in need. There are a lot of people in need at this time. So come on down. Absolutely. And a great event. Suzanne, one of the things that you do so well and, and I like when you can take something that maybe a little bit routine or just a business kind of thing you got to do and turn it into something really special. That's really exciting and smart. And I'm not saying that your installation of officers every year is something routine. It is an important thing, but you guys really make a big event out of it at the Westmanville Chamber. We broadcast live at virtually every event. You put an awful lot of work into it. And, uh, and I, we're really excited to do the installation uh, again with you through a partnership. And this year, uh, we're going to make it a big, exciting event in Civic Center TV, getting together with the Chamber to bring it all in the air live. Uh, what do we know about it right now? And I assume we have to have a couple of meetings to figure out all the details. Absolutely. Yeah, it's always something that's great for the community to introduce our board of directors to them. 
Um, I think it's really important that people understand that we have a great board uh, from Henry Ford Health, Beaumont, and we have a lot of local small uh, businesses that I want to serve our community. So usually we get like a local TV anchor, we get um, our local judge, usually it's Judge D'Agostini, 48th District Court Judge. Um, we have it at an event, a beautiful breakfast, we give away swag bags. So we try to make everything with a little bit of a twist or to make it like a big event so that people feel special and valued. And it's just a great way for the community to get to know uh, the important people on our board that are doing great things to help serve our community and make sure that our community thrives. Well, it's it's always good to get together, get fellow business people together. And any opportunity you could do that, you get to mingle, you meet somebody you didn't know, uh, maybe you could share a couple of ideas. And oh, by the way, there's really good breakfast there. Um, it's always a lot of fun and uh, we look forward to, you always have a distinguished group of people there. We're gonna broadcast it again live. We'll probably, it'll probably happen right during the Splash Live. We'll make it a special edition of the Splash Live and uh, more details to be announced location to be announced but we'll be doing it right after the first of the year and okay. uh we got a little bit of work to do to put those details together but i i agree with you I, any opportunity and we're working on it here and, and you know from being on the cable commission board any opportunity that we can take to get out of our homes like we are today get in the community do the show from places get a chance to interact and mingle and be with people is always great um it's so great. yeah go ahead no go ahead i'm sorry no, i want to i want to thank you know, the great job that Tyler and every everyone is doing over there. I know it, what a big task it is to broadcast live every day. So, and you're, you showcase a lot of our local business owners. So I'm most appreciative to all that you do uh, to support our community, because this really is the only local broadcast of news and events and getting to know some of the people that, you know, work and serve in our community. All right, well, it wouldn't happen without Jared Clark and Calvin Brown doing a really good yes, job. Jared and Calvin just kicking it today. And with that, I got to sip on my Starbucks and say so long. Suzanne, thank you very much. I'll see you in person real soon. Thank you for watching. Be careful on the roads today as you're driving around West Ham. A little bit of snow, not a lot, but just enough to slip you up. Have a good day. We'll see you tomorrow morning right here on the Splash Live.